I'm going to share with you a very simple story, which is that I went home one day and I said, well, what's, why are conservatives bad, mommy? Because I thought we were supposed to conserve things. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't reconcile it. Now I can. <laughs> Vice President Kamala Harris cracking herself up while telling an oddly specific story from her childhood and insulting Republicans in the process. Our kick host Tommy Lahren joins us. Tommy, I messed up the tease to you because I knew how excited you were to weigh in on this. I couldn't even find my words. Um, look. Kamala had definitely different conversations with her mother than yeah. I did with mine growing up. But why is she wasting her time on bashing conservatives when she is supposed to represent the entire nation and be doing things in her job as vice president to help everyone? Why is she wasting time at panels saying, oh, conservatives stink? Well, this is the Unity administration, so I wouldn't really expect anything different from our vice president. But this goes a little further than being cringeworthy. Let's take a look at this and let's think about it. You've got the vice president of the United States, a woman, by the way, who, whether you love her or hate her, she inspires a lot of younger generations, especially of young girls that wish that they could attain that level of success in their life to be the vice president of the United States. And you have her not only admitting, but laughing and proudly admitting that she judges someone based on their political ideology and she's been taught to do that from an early age. Let's let that sink in because that is what is wrong with society today. Democrats believe and they teach their children to believe that you can judge somebody, that a litmus test for friendship is someone's political ideology and their political party. That not only is cringy, and we look at Kamala Harris, we wonder why she's not going to the border, why she's sitting in Colorado taking jabs at conservatives, but this also goes to the Democrat Party as a whole and how they look at half of this country, whether it's Hillary Clinton calling us deplorables or Joe Biden sitting there telling us that we are mega Republicans and a threat to democracy. This is what the Democrat Party of 2023 believes, and it's disgusting. Yeah, and it's also immature for the vice president to be to be saying that. But Novak Djokovic, the number one tennis player in the world, has withdrawn from upcoming tournaments in the United States because the Biden administration is denying him entry for being unvaxxed. I thought COVID was over. I thought the pandemic was done. That's what my notes say. Listen, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and the pandemic has been done for about two and a half years now. So eventually the Biden administration will catch up. We even have California rolling back its mask mandate and its vaccine mandate for health care workers. But still, we're doing this. We're denying people entering the United States that have had COVID multiple times. When we also know by now, and it's been an established fact, the vaccine does not prevent infection or spread. This at this point, I don't understand what this administration is doing. I don't understand if it's purely for political purposes. They don't want to admit they were wrong. But the fact that we are still doing this, well, we've got tens of thousands of illegal immigrants coming across our th southern border by the day who are unmasked and unvaccinated. This is a whole new level of hypocrisy. But I don't expect anything different from this administration. I will say, however, I am really proud of all those athletes and public figures out there that have stood up to this, that have refused to bend, that have refused to cave, because they're an inspiration to a lot of people to have that intestinal fortitude to stick by your principles, even when you have to sacrifice a lot. It's tough. He has stuck by his principles yeah. throughout this entire time. He's also one of the top 100 healthiest people in the world. But in a couple so, months, he could come here, yeah, no he problem. Come here, nah, that's too late for the BNP Paribas. Uh, meantime, a professor is demanding black staff get special paid time off to deal with fatigue from systemic racism. Quote, in an op-ed titled, Where's Our Black Bereavement Leave? The professor asks, although it is customary for employees to receive support and understanding while grieving the loss of a loved one, the same care is rarely shown to the black community when we lose someone in traumatic ways. Your reaction, Tommy? Well, this is critical race theory at its core, and this professor is a critical race theory professor, so this doesn't surprise me. What really troubles me is this is the kind of education that's being brought into schools, and not just in a college education, but all the way as young as elementary school through high school. This is what is being taught, that you should divide people based on race and decide what they should be given and what special conditions should be made for them because of the color of their skin, which is wrong on its face. But let's also think about this. The institution also didn't say if other minority groups would be given such special leave or if they would consider that. And what about the people in communities, all people in all communities of all colors who deal with crime on a day-to-day -day basis, who are fatigued from that? Let's talk about that. Let's have that discussion. 
But no, they want to talk about race and only race because it's a way to divide Americans. And this is what critical race theory is. And where we can look at this and we can say it's ridiculous at the collegiate level, this is what's being taught to your children, Americans. Wake up and get active. All right, Tommy Laren, thank you. Thanks, Tommy. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.